Alright guys, welcome back to F1 News. Toto Wolff has claimed he would much rather lose a championship than win one without integrity and by cheating in what seems like another thinly veiled dig at Christian Horner and Red Bull for their 2021 cost camp breach. This comes at a time when Red Bull have won 24 of the last 25 races and Mercedes are trying everything they can on and off the track to prevent that from being the case for too much longer. Very much interested to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. Now Singapore might be some of these teams' best chances chance to actually stop Red Bull this season. This is the race that Red Bull seem a little bit more concerned about than some of the others. Actually, Helmut Marco said, he's at it again in the media, right? Saying that Ferrari and especially Leclerc are very, well, Leclerc very good at Singapore. Ferrari, I'm not so sure will be that good at Singapore, to be honest. As far as I'm concerned, Monza was like their best chance. Like the stars aligned for Ferrari and Monza. Their car is rapid in a straight line because they worked on that a lot over the winter. They put a brand new engine in and all these components. They seem to almost build their cars to do well at Monza at this point. And they still couldn't really get anywhere close to the Stafford in the Grand Prix. They haven't been good at the higher downfall circuit. Zandvoort was an absolute disaster for Ferrari. Aston Martin, I don't think at this point in the season, the way the development has gone, are really good enough to compete with Red Bull and win a race off them. Now, they had their chance in Monaco. Had they have pitted on the correct lap, Alonso would have come out ahead of Verstappen when the rain fell and if he'd have held Verstappen behind, which he could well have done, they could have won that race. They didn't do it though, so I think realistically, Mercedes have the best chance, especially because the Mercedes is pretty good at the high downforce tracks. If they didn't massively bottle the strategy in Zandvoort, they should have for sure, I think, been on the podium there. Hamilton even reckons they could have been maybe challenged Max for the win. So the higher downforce tracks, let's not forget Brazil, Mercedes actually won last year and that is the only race of the last 25 that uh, Red Bull did not win. George Russell won that Grand Prix, Hamilton P2 for the 1-2 at Interlagos. They'll be optimistic they can do the same again, but Red Bull this year think they've got it covered. It's the higher downforce tracks, the likes of Singapore, potentially as well Qatar, just because Qatar is a pretty high downforce track. There's lots of corners. You've got to run a lot of wing. So Mercedes might be optimistic about that as well in a few weeks' time. Suzuka also should be okay for them. But I think there's only a few circuits left where other teams really have a chance. Of course, disregarding potential reliability issues, which could happen for Max and maybe still will happen from now to the end of the season. But Singapore does give opportunities, I think, for other teams. Red Bull aren't fully confident they're going to win. Verstappen wants to, though. But also, there has been a change this year to the circuit layout. This this is the traditional Singapore Grand Prix circuit layout, of course, since the sling was removed. But um, anyway, that's, uh, that chicane is a few years old at this point and out of date. But it's this section, which is frankly a pretty iconic section of corners into turn 21 and beyonds that have been changed this year. This whole complex, 17, 18, 19, is now gone. This complex between 18 and 19, you guys probably will know, is the tunnel which they go through and it's pretty iconic section of corners on the entire Grand Prix Canada. Now, this section is, I think, built like over the water or something like that anyway. And they're doing some renovation work or they're building something in it. I forget exactly what the story is. They're building something in this area. So they're having to change the layout this year. Doesn't mean this can't return in the future because it is what makes, in some sense, the soul of this track, I would say. But is it good for racing? No. There's no overtaking opportunities in Sector 3. And there is now an additional one. So for this year's Grand Prix, the circuit is the same as usual. So um, DRS down to turn 7. DRS down to turn 14, but no DRS down to this corner, which is, as you can see, this entire section here has been cut out. So there's actually a much longer straight. I don't believe this has DRS on, even though this shorter straight still will. A little bit interesting. They might change their mind on that going forwards. I think it should be good, though, in theory. Drivers, at least for racing, drivers should be able to follow closer. Then, you know, imagine you get DRS on this straight. You get to close up a little bit, force the driver in front to defend the inside line. You get a nice it'll switch back, get the slipstream, and then head down. And it's another overtaken opportunity, right? Another heavy braking zone that hasn't really been the case in this part before. So yes, maybe it reduces some of the soul of the track, but more than likely it does add another overtaking chance that probably Rebel will be happy about just because another straight, another chance to use some straight line speed could be advantageous for their car, especially because last year when Verstappen qualified out of position because he um, they didn't put enough fuel in his car, basically, he had a really hard time making his way through the field and had many, well, failed overtake attempts during the course of that Grand Prix. And Max says, looking forward to racing it, so we'll see if that throws up any surprises, because teams won't be able to. They'll have to run slightly 
different setup, you know. The fact that there's fewer corners in that sector three and one more straight probably will dictate some slight changes to wing levels and stuff like that that the teams will play around with on the weekends. But many teams have been getting frustrated and you can only understand why. The fact that Red Bull have won so many of the last few races, right? I mean, of the last 25 races from the end of last season after Ferrari fell off a cliff really, it's been 24 of 25. It's kind of uh, ridiculous. I mean, what is that? 96% of the last 25 Grand Prix have been won by Red Bull, mostly Verstappen. A few of those have been Sergio Perez, including Singapore last year, let's not forget. But Fernando Alonso, as a result, is like, these new regulations, given what they were meant to achieve, have not exactly been entirely successful. And look, you can't blame Red Bull for this. They've just done a stellar job with the tools they've been given. As Fernando says, don't know what they're feeding those guys, but they're the best at everything. They've got the best car, the best driver. They make no mistakes, the best pit stops, the best starts, the best strategies. It's like, how are you meant to beat this team in the moment unless there is reliability issues? And even that hasn't been a problem for them this year. Total Wolf, of course, has similarly been on the same warpath and said, yes, well done, Red Bull. It's a meritocracy here in Formula One. You've done the best job. Therefore, you get to reap the rewards. And he says, yep, you know, people were crying foul when it was us winning, but entertainment follows the sport, not the other way around. You can't be the WWE and have scripted content. We don't want to have have scripted content. If it takes us a long time to catch up, then it takes a long time. As long as you comply with the regulations, technical, sporting, and financial, and we'll get back to that in a second, you just need to say, well done. This is a meritocracy, he says, about what Red Bull are currently achieving. But you can tell that with the way Mercedes are talking about this, they would much rather like it to be a different scenario here, and I'm sure they would like, if possible, for the FEA to step in and make some regulation changes or whatever's necessary to try and rebalance the field, because the promise of these new regulations, that there was going to be more teams fighting for wins and less predictable races, is frankly not the case at the moment. Now, this was the key statement Total Wolf went on to say that, um, look, you can say this is sour grapes, you can say Total Wolf is salty, and it's probably true. I'd be salty as well if the guy that I've been beefing for the last several years is now looking smug every single week as his driver and team wins literally everything and uh, potentially wipes the floor with some of the records that Mercedes have set over the last few years. Total Wolf says, though, I would give up a championship before I break the rules, going on to say the following, you need to to live by the standards every day, whether you win or whether you lose. We've had those challenging moments. I think the reason why we won a lot was this no-blame culture they always talk about. I would give up a championship before I break the rules in an intentional way, because reputation and integrity are everything today. I don't want to be judged by a championship or two. I want the team to be judged after 20 years or whether we've done more things right or wrong for loyalty. We've not lost many people. This quote especially is interesting though, right? Saying that, you know, it's better to lose than it is to win by cheating. And this, of course, is referencing, you would think, in large part, the 2021 cost cap situation. Now, he doesn't say it outright, but, you know, that's surely what he's thinking when he says that, that, yeah, you know, I'm happy to be seconds in a season. Well, obviously, he's not happy to be second, but you know what I mean? He'd rather be second than he would be first and a cheat, is what he's trying to say. Now, you can obviously look at Mercedes and say, well, that tyre test you guys did a few years ago with Pirelli, like, that was a little bit dodgy. And the teams are always looking for loopholes to exploit. So, this seems like, you know, just, well, using a good opportunity to take a dig back at Red and saying that, well, that 2021 breach was cheating the financial regulations, which, you know, of course, that breach was in 2021, but theoretically, some of the resources, especially at the end of that season, would have been used for 2022. And therefore, you could argue that the breach of that year, its benefits have carried over into the new set of regulations. That's an argument that may be true. Is that true enough to explain the performance delta they have? I don't think so. They've clearly done a very good job regardless of some of these restrictions that they supposedly have in place, but no one really talks about it anymore. Now, the FEA did say at the time that they don't believe this was done deliberately. So according to the official line from the FEA, this was not a deliberate breach by Red Bull, and that's what they say. So therefore, that doesn't quite align with what Total Wolf is saying. But some people have a hard time believing that's necessarily the case, thinking that, well, Red Bull were definitely trying to push the boundaries, and obviously they wanted to keep it in the cap, but there were certain things 
ones that were counted that they didn't want to be counted and therefore they were over. So, you know, there was some disagreement on the $500,000 or the $1.8 million, whatever the figure was, depending on some tax recalculations and stuff like this that they ended up getting um, dealt the blow with. So that's pretty much where we are today. But a lot of people will say, look, Mercedes, Total Wolf, you've got to focus on building a better car and actually taking the challenge of Ripple rather than just saying things to the media because while it may be effective at stirring up some controversy, it's not exactly effective at actually getting race victory. So like Mercedes are going to be putting effort in back at the factory as they always like to say, but all of that at this point in the season is going to go to next year's car, which they can only hope is significantly better relative to Red Bull than they are presently experiencing. Just one final thing to close out here. We've talked over the last couple of weeks about the tyre supplier for 2025 and beyonds, the battle between Pirelli and Bridgestone wanting to make their return. Now, Pirelli were thought to have got the deal done and it was going to be Pirelli again, but there's now the belief that Pirelli will actually decide to step away at the end of 2028, even if it wins the new tender. Pirelli are gone after 28. That's the belief right now that they want to step away and no longer do it. They feel like they've gained the benefits associated and therefore they're going to be done and dusted with the sport. That would mean that come 2029, if there's no other application other than Bridgestone, then it's got to be Bridgestone and Bridgestone will effectively set the price. Whereas if they were to accept the Bridgestone offer right now, then Bridgestone will be paying a lot more than they would if they come in effectively, not exactly for free, but they will be able to do it for a lot cheaper come 2029. So that's the debate that Formula One are having right now is that they want to get more money from the tyre suppliers. It's a bit risky to switch away from Pirelli, although I think a lot of people would quite like to see Bridgestone tyres back on the grid or even a tyre war that some people want that I'm not so convinced is a great idea but still there is more of a debate on this so it's almost leaning the way of being more 50 50 or even if money really is absolutely everything which you know you've got to maximize shareholder revenue then they might go for the bridgestone deal which apparently is worth more money than what pirelli are currently willing to pay but very much interested to your thoughts in the comments hit the like button if you enjoyed subscribe if you're new take care and i'll see you next time